What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today, I was gonna talk to you about the coconut palm. Now, I know you've probably seen these plants or trees all up and down any kind of tropical area. I mean, it's in the dead of winter here in Kentucky and we've actually got them in our uh, stores. So, I came across this one. I've seen it before and I thought, oh, isn't that cute? It comes out of a little coconut shell. Um, I mean, it's a nut, but other than that, uh, it is a tree. Um, the coconut tree, it's known as Cocos nucifera, and actually, it's a member of the palm family, uh, Ericaceae, and, uh, and it's the only living species of the genus Cocos. Now, there is a bunch of different varieties of them. I believe that the really tall ones that you see in uh, the Caribbean, uh, they are like tall Jamaican coconut palms. Uh, they also have short little small ones, some dwarf varieties, and they all come in different kind of shapes and sizes, uh, but there is only one member of the family, and it's the Cocos family, actually, Ericaceae, the palm tree. Quite interesting, why we actually call it a coconut is because it's actually from the Spanish and Portuguese word, coco, and that means head or skull, and they actually get that because of the three indentations that are on the coconut nut, uh, they actually resemble facial features, so a little FYI. But today I'm going to talk to you about how to actually care for that in your home. Um, it has been said that caring for these plants actually borders on the insane for a great many of reasons. Uh, three of them I'll go ahead and sum up for you. First one is that these plants can get huge. I mean, they grow well over 100 feet, depending on what variety you have. So, I mean, these plants will get ginormous. Another reason, and probably the most important reason, is because people with our homes, we're not able to provide the actual requirements that a coconut needs in order to thrive. Um, the first one being light. These guys need to receive well, well over eight hours of sunlight a day. And a lot of play, uh, houses don't get that. Um, so the only time you can sit this in a windowsill is in the wintertime. Um, and it needs to be in a southern facing window for that light. We're also not equipped in our homes to deal with the high humidity levels. I mean, these plants receive annually about 40 to 60 inches of rainfall. So they get a lot of water and they need a lot of water in order to thrive. And the third reason is because they don't propagate really well at all. So you can't really expect to get nuts and to actually grow them from indoors. Um, now these have been grown on a farm and shipped over here, but if you're growing them indoors, you're not gonna be able to get them to actually flower or produce any kind of seed or anything like that. Now, with the plants, they do prefer a well-drained soil. So once again, I've got my miracle Grow potting mix for the cactus, palm, and citrus. Now I know this isn't either one of those, but it's got a lot of sand in it. And it will help the plant to actually uh, get rid of any excess water that it has. Uh, because just like any other plant, they don't like to be sitting in a lot of water. I mean, they can do it for some periods of time, uh, but they don't like to have constantly soaking wet feet. They're not a bog plant. So you don't want them to be sending water at all times. You do want them to be able to actually get rid of any kind of excess water that they have. And this stuff does have a lot of sand in it, so it will allow the plant to actually get rid of a lot of water. Now, if you're gonna make your own uh, kind of potting mix, uh, a general kind of uh, one for any kind of indoor plant, I guess, uh, might work, but you're gonna have to add a lot of sand to it. I would use builder sand because that sand has been washed quite extensively and it will actually remove a lot of the smaller silt that could do a little bit of harm to the plant. So if you are making your own, try to use builder sand. Now, um, when you transplant this and you get it from the store, you wanna try to go for about a 12 inch pot. I got a 10 inch pot. Um, a 12 inch might equal about three gallons of soil and substrate and that will actually provide a lot of room for the plant because coconuts uh, they don't go that deep with roots and they don't need a whole lot of area so uh, they will be fine in about a 12 inch pot but like I said I got a 10 inch pot so we'll see how that works out and as you can see this guy is really pot bound now I did wash out my pot I got that from the store, came home and sanitized it, used warm soap and water to make sure I kill anything else 
that was in it because you don't want to spread anything from plant to plant. And also, be sure to sanitize your pruning shears as well. I'm gonna go get me some scissors to cut open this pot. Now, you'll also want to make sure that you do sanitize these scissors too if you're gonna be cutting anywhere down around the roots because you might accidentally slip and actually hurt the plant. Now, as you can tell, it's extremely pot bound. It's really tight. The roots are really thick. So, uh, that's the only way I'm gonna be able to get the pot out is if I cut it. Now, don't worry about hurting any roots. You're going, you're going to. You can actually hurt up to about three quarters of the roots. And when I say hurt, I mean kind of cut without actually harming the plant. But uh, if you don't have to hurt that many roots, don't. But that does allow you some area towards mistake. Now what I did is just cut straight down the side of the pot. And now I'm trying to cut underneath and make sure that I'm not really cutting any of the roots. But like I said, if you do, don't get that upset over it. And make sure you do have a trash can under you because you're going to make a mess with all this excess dirt and sand. And just be patient while you're trying to wrestle this pot free from its roots. Now you might actually have to trim up some of the roots at the bottom in order to remove the pot entirely. And if you do, go ahead, like I said, use uh, your sanitized pruning shears to eliminate any kind of spread of disease. And just be patient, it will come free. Don't pull too hard. There we go. And this time, I'm just gonna try to remove all this excess soil because you don't need a whole bunch of other caked in soil. Um, a little bit might help it to make sure that any kind of uh, bacteria or any other micro nutrients can actually uh, go into your new pot and kind of help the plant out. What I'll do with my one hand as I hold with my left, with my right hand, I'm going to kind of dig a little indentation to set the coconut back down in. And you can see this little line right here where the plant rested in the soil, you do not need to bury the coconut. You want to aim for about that same area. Alright, now, it's easy if you use a Lazy Susan when you actually go to put the soil in. Get the coconut to about where you want it, just as centered as you can. And start applying. Shake the bag. And rotate. And as I said, you don't want to bury the coconut. You just want to set him down in there, fill him up with a little bit of dirt, and give him a little bit of room to spread out. Now, you do want to compact it just like you would any other plant. Once you get it down in there, kind of press down to eliminate any kind of air bubbles. You don't want to crush it, but you do want to apply some force. That will help hold the plant in place. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit more. Now generally, I would say once you get it planted in there, I would give it a good watering. But I don't know if you could tell from when I was transplanting, that one was soaked. The roots were all wet, the soil was all soggy. I actually think a little bit actually ran out from the bottom of the pot. Um, so I probably won't add any kind of water to the substrate. Actually, I will give it a good misting. Um, these guys do like a lot of humidity. If you don't take away anything else, just remember, palm trees, they do like a lot of humidity. Actually, if you take away two things, I just want you to remember the light. Because this is just like a cactus in terms of light. You cannot get away with setting this on any kind of windowsill except a southern facing windowsill. And that's only in the wintertime. Now, when the summertime and spring hits, you need to take this guy outside, set him in direct sunlight for at least eight hours a day. I know as far as pests, the actual spider mites will run rampant on these guys and they can actually get in the creases of the palm leaves in here so you'll have to keep a lookout for that spider mites are going to be a pain if you ever have a problem with any kind of plant let alone a palm tree and as you can see the uh, new leaf and new stem is actually kind of developing right here so that would be a perfect little crevice for these little creatures to get into and actually run rampant and you'll notice the spider mites just because you'll see a lot of little spider webs all over the leaves and you won't really kind of see the spider mites but you can if you look hard enough uh, so if you do see a lot of kind of cobwebby any kind of cobwebs on there you'll know that you do have spider mites and the best way to deal with spider mites would be to actually take your plant 
and set it in the bathtub. If you have a sprayer or like a little garden hose out back, the shower setting on it, and just spray it off. Now, in nature, these plants actually depend on Mother Nature to come along whenever it rains and kind of wash the pests off. So indoors, these plants don't have that luxury. And they need to depend on us, and they actually do. So to actually get rid of any kind of uh, pest, an organic way I should say, I would take the pot and I would set it in the bathroom and I would hose it off. That would work with spider mites, mealybug. But like I said, if you're wanting to try to defeat any kind of pest in an organic way, wash it off with water and then you can use like an insecticidal soap and use that kind of uh, conservatively. You don't want to apply a whole lot. Other than that, these plants are really hard to take care of. So I wouldn't suggest you actually taking care of one unless you kind of are more of an experienced grower. Other than that, this is my first time growing one of these. And I will document this and kind of let you guys know how it's doing. Um, it's early January. Actually, it's kind of about the mid-January. So I've got it in its new home. I've got fresh substrate in there. I'm going to mist it. Uh, every several days to make sure that it's okay because it is the winter time then I'll water it kind of sporadically too but not too sporadically kind of a little bit more than my other plants because like I said these plants do like a lot of water other than that uh, fertilizer if you want to fertilize the plants I would say any kind of 20-20-20 fertilizer would be pretty good on the plant and like I said they do have sand if you see them on the beach they'll get washed in and washed out so some actually do pretty well with feedings Others, they aren't so lucky, so I'm not going to lie, I don't know too much about fertilizing with these guys, so I would actually kind of look that one up if I were you. Other than that, good luck. Like I said, I've done bonsais before for probably about 12 to 15 years, uh, and I've done almost every kind that I can imagine, but I have not done this one. Um, now this won't really be a bonsai, I guess to a certain extent it will be, because I will be kind of keeping it smaller. And just like any other bonsai, the best way to keep it small is to keep it pot bound and to trim it. Now you can trim any kind of dead leaves that you see on these guys, trim them back just like you would any kind of other plant. And if you're trying to, if you, you get a really large one and you don't want it to actually uh, go into another large pot size, trim the roots back. Because uh, once you do this, that will actually help keep the plant really small. Because if it's not growing too well down below here, it's not going to grow too well up above the soil either. So by keeping the roots trimmed back, you'll actually kind of keep your plant fairly small. Now I know for about a year, these guys can actually absorb kind of nutrients from here. So the nut or droop, as they call it, uh, which is similar to like a peach, will be around for a, a year or so and then they'll kind of just kind of suck it dry and then you can actually kind of plant it like you would a normal tree. This plant uh, is going to be a hard one but I will update you all and let you know how it's gone, where I've made any kind of mistakes or if I've had any kind of success with it. Well guys, that's really all I have to say about Cocos nucifera or the coconut palm. Uh, like I said, I don't really know a whole lot about this plant so I probably will be seeking some advice so if you do have any kind of wealth of knowledge or know anything about it, feel free to actually let me know some of this stuff because I don't know too much about it, as you can probably tell. Like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've had any kind of success or failures with this plant. And uh, let me know what it takes to actually keep this guy going. If you don't mind, while you're at it, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell next to it because that will alert you anytime that I've uploaded a new video. Well guys, have a good one. Take it easy. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.